Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to take you through the initial setup of the first virtual machine. In the previous videos we deployed our USB pen, we got ESXi installed, and uh, I have the console open here from last time. We can see the IP address that was assigned. So basically what I'm going to do here is to take my browser, I'm going to minimize this window here, and we'll essentially just type the IP right in. Okay, that takes us to the host client. Put in the password, the live password that we decided to use. We'll prompt us about the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program, the CIP. Yeah, why why not? Uh, let's ship that in. I think we'll even make this window a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can uh, zoom out just a little bit so we have some more screen real estate here. So the first thing we'll want to take a notice at here is that it says we're currently in eval mode and the license will expire in 60 days. Okay, so I think I mentioned this in the previous video, but of course, after the 60 days, you will have to put in a real license. Now you could get that from the VMware user group program, the so-called Advantage program, or if you're very active in the community, perhaps you would be able to gain some vExpert licenses. Alternatively, of course, you could go and buy the licenses, but this is the maybe not the, the, the cheapest way to, to go here, honestly. So if this is really for a lab, I would suggest just looking into the uh, VMUG Advantage program. I'll post a link to this in, in the chat. Now, the first thing I'm going to set up in this lab here basically is a virtual machine. Now you could say, well, what kind of virtual machine are we setting up? Well, since this is a new lab, normally I would say, hey, let's set up a vCenter. But to deploy a vCenter, we need working for DNS and reverse DNS, which I don't have because I don't have any virtual machines at all. So instead, the first machine I'm going to set up today is going to be a domain controller. Now we have basically two options. We can use this so-called host client here, click create register VM. We could uh, sort of go through the, the wizard here. And um, I think I'll, I'll do just exactly that. We'll call this DC01, domain controller 01. Uh, compatibility mode to uh, since my host is already running ESXi 7.0, I have no intention of running older versions. I, I want to use the latest and greatest here. I'll pick that. Uh, installing Windows. And uh, what are we installing? 2019. So why, why do we have to tell it about this information here? Honestly, it's because we'll have something called VMware tools installed inside the machine, but also because of the disk controllers. So this way it will put a disk controller in this virtual machine that it knows that, for example, Windows Server 2019 has a built-in driver for. If I was to pick, let's say, 2019, but, but then actually put in the Windows Server 2003 ISO, I know it's a little bit old, but then that would be a SAS controller, and 2003 doesn't know SAS, so it doesn't have a driver. I would then either have to load that driver or basically ab abandon the installation because it, it just would not be able to see the disks. Let's click Next. Where are we placing it? So I already have a, a data store set up. And this is on my uh, Micron PCI Express SSD. It's running on VMFS 6, and you really should be using VMFS 6 anyway. This is how things are going. Next, uh, CPU-wise, well, I don't think it really needs uh, to have that many uh, CPUs. I think I'm just going to lower this to one, especially for, uh, I have a lot of CPUs here, but in, in, in your lab, uh, you may not, so I'm, I'm just going to set it up like I would if, if this was a uh, somewhat more limited lab here. So I think that one CPU is enough. Uh, I would even argue that we could go with one gigabyte. Now notice here it was set to four gigabytes, but defined in megabytes. And when I change this to gigabytes, it, it, it keeps it to like four terabytes uh, basically now. So uh, be, be a little bit careful here. Uh, disk wise, hmm, good question. How small can we make this? Um, you know what, I'm actually not 100% sure, so um, why don't we give it a, a go at 20 uh, gigabytes. I suspect it might not be enough, but um, we'll, we'll take it from there. I'm going to make it thin provisions so that um, it starts off at, at zero and, and then it will grow. So uh, collapse the disk again. SCSI controller, ah, this is an interesting one. So I am going to go with the VMware para virtual one. Uh, these two are fine, but uh, this one means I'll get the highest possible performance at the lowest possible cost of resources. 
Uh -huh. Then there's a USB controller. Um, normally you might think, oh, let's remove this. Uh, no, you will want to have this here just for the mouse access during the installation. Network adapter. Okay, yeah, I'm going to call this VMXNet3 again. Highest possible performance, lowest possible cost of CPU and, 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 and memory. And the other thing is it also allows uh, receive site scaling. So this is a virtual 10 gigabit adapter. CD DVD drive. Hmm. Okay, so we have to install Windows. Now I, I, I have two options from the host client. Host device, meaning a physical CD DVD drive in the host itself. I don't have a physical uh, DVD to put in. Uh, I don't want to make one. So this is uh, kind of out of uh, question here. I could also upload the ISO to a data store, but I'm going to show you an alternative. Now, once I start the installation of, of Windows, I will have to provide a driver for the para, uh, virtual SCSI controller up here. Now, I don't really have a way of doing that uh, without it, uh, taking out the uh, Windows drive. So I'm going to temporarily go and add a extra CD DVD drive. So we have two of those now. And uh, I'm just going to leave this at, at the default here. Okay, next, finish. Now the uh, small issue here right now is basically the fact that um, this ISO file is sitting on my local computer and uh, I didn't want to upload it. So I'm going to minimize this and show you an alternative way. Now you don't have to do this. You, you could just upload it to, to the data store and uh, maybe I should uh, show you how to do that just before we, uh, we do that. So uh, if you wanted to upload it, you would basically just go to storage, the uh, drive here, uh, data store browser, and then you could say upload, downloads, uh -huh, okay. And then you would have to pick the ISO file from, from here. Okay, but I'm, as mentioned, not going to do that. So I'm gonna minimize this. Instead, I'm going to show you, you could also use VMware Workstation for this. And I'm, I'm just in the eval here. Uh, so I'm saying connect to remote server. So then we have to type in the same IP, same username and password as I used before. Okay, it doesn't trust the certificate, which is okay because it's self-signed. And uh, from here, you could have even created a virtual machine. Yeah, now I did it from the host client, so that's okay. The machine is already here. And uh, I'm basically just going to power on this machine. Now it's not booting. And why is it not booting? Well, I, I didn't give it access to the uh, drive here. So let's go to removal and drive one, settings. And then you can see, oh, now I can suddenly use an ISO image here. and. Uh, see here what do we have uh, no ah sorry it has to be location local client okay browse and then i've obtained a windows Server 2019 from my msdn license here now i'm just going to uh, show you what if you don't have that uh, like an msdn subscription well then you could basically just go and download from the eval sender so i put the uh, link up here, but I'll, I'll put it in the description as well. And essentially you would just find Windows Server 2019, say that you want the ISO file and then continue and it's going to ask you to log in and, and so on. But uh, in the end, it will start the download of the ISO file. Okay, minimize this again. Now we wanna make sure that it says connected. Uh, I'll even say connected power on, uh, yeah. Second thing is what about the VMware tools? So I'm gonna connect this as well, remote server, use ISO image, browse, and then I'm going to go to the, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna to go to the host. Notice we have this, it's not really a data store, but a location, should we say, called VM images, let's go in there, tools, ISO images, and then windows, because this is where VMware tools is going to be, which is a piece of software we can install in the VM, and it comes with the drivers, but because it contains the drivers, I can use these during the initial setup. So let's uh, go in and say we want to boot from the virtual SATA CD-ROM drive. Uh, it did not work. That's okay, let's just say reset. And then hopefully it works. Yeah. Don't forget to press enter here. And then the drive is literally going to be loading as we speak here. And this, of course, will take just a little bit of time. If you wanna speed up the process, you could temporarily give this machine more uh, CPU and memory during the installation. Just if you're looking to save, then maybe scale it back down again afterwards. Uh, I intentionally made it uh, very, very small to begin with. OK. 
Okay, it's almost there. Great. So the idea is now that it's uh, actually via the network from my local computer here, booting up from the ISO file with Windows, which, which is uh, pretty cool, I have to say. All right, so Windows, so uh, what do we want? Well, I'm just gonna leave the defaults here. Uh, you might want to change these to your local keyboard. Uh, I don't really care about that, so that's, that's okay. Install. Now, some people might want to um, decide what to do here next because we'll be presented with two different options in, in just a little bit, which is going to be basically the uh, core setup, uh, which is now just called Windows Server 2019 standard, or the full GUI, the desktop experience, which will, like it says, consume extra drive space, but it might also use some additional memory and, and stuff like that. I think uh, if you really want to do things the fancy way, I, I would suggest using core here. Uh, then you have to remotely ad administrate it somehow, which is uh, not a bad thing to learn. But for ease of setup here initially, I'm going to go with the desktop experience here, especially since this is sort of a home lab built from, from scratch, it might be more accessible for, for most people. Okay, yeah, we have to accept the license terms here. Upgrades, no, because this is a clean machine, so custom. And you see, there's no place to install, right? Like I said, it, it, it says we couldn't find any drives. That's okay, load driver, okay, browse. And then we have the two drives. We have the uh, one with the Windows on and then the one with VMware tools on. So I'm gonna browse down here, program files, VMware, VMware tools, drivers, PV SCSI, Windows 8, 64 bits, click okay. Found the driver, next. Hopefully that should be, yep, there we go. So we see the drive. We can click next if we wanna do partitioning uh, or, or new here. I'm just gonna say next, it'll, it'll do all of the partitioning by itself. I really have no interest in doing that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let this uh, Windows installation uh, finish up and then I will come back on the video here. Okay, so Windows finally finished the installation. So I have to put in my new administrator password here. And hopefully we're ready to go. So what are we gonna do now? Well, Windows is basically up and running, but of course we have a few uh, things to do still. So if you remember, we uh, loaded during the installation the driver for the uh, para-virtualized SCSI controller, but I also selected the VMXNet uh, tree network uh, adapter. And uh, because of this, there's going to be no network adapter inside Windows here, which uh, of course means I can't really communicate with this machine. So the next step is basically to go and make sure that VMware tools is installed. Uh, we do have to drive mounted still. So I'm just gonna go and install this right away. It's also mean that we get the visualization in the host client later in the vCenter that in fact it is installed and everything is up and running. We can see the network adapter down here is kind of complaining that it's it's not installed, so that's that's all fine. We'll wait for the installer to start up. And, uh, we could uh, go and take a quick peek and see. So I picked 20 gigabytes. I see we, we still have almost 10 left. So for a machine that's going to be doing almost nothing, I think this is completely fine, but we can we can always expand the disk if, if need be later on. Okay. Need more tools install. Next, I'm just gonna go with typical, that's completely fine. And we see it la it's launching uh, the server manager. I'm just gonna close this down in the background. We can deal with that a little bit later on. Okay. There we had the VMX and tree driver. Perfect. Yeah, network card is now starting to function. I'll leave that alone for now. Okay, it's almost here. 
Yep, perfect. And we will definitely want to restart. Now, before we do this, uh, actually, I guess I could just say yes. Let's go and uh, clean up this machine a little bit. So I'll get rid of this second drive here, remove that. And then I'm going to set this to a remote server, use physical drive, and uh, even just remove the connection here because, um, oh, ah, I have to, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I guess actually we'll, uh, we'll leave it like this for now. I'll just remove this one and see if it'll let me do that. Yeah. I think we have to do it from the host client otherwise. Oh, it's actually booting pretty fast. We have a little button up here. Okay, so this uh, kind of means that we have the first VM up and running. Uh, one thing, of course, that we can start thinking about, what, what are the next steps? Well, in the next video, I'll show you how we get to set up as a domain controller and actually get that uh, set up. I wanted to limit this video on, on length a little bit just so we, uh, we keep it to just getting the first VM up and running with uh, VMware tools with the parallelized SCSI controller and so on. Uh, but just, just to really show you that everything's up and running, let's go take a quick peek inside here. Change network adapter options and we see, yeah, yeah, for sure it's right here. The virtual 10 gigabit adapter. And I think, yeah, yeah it's, it's already picked an IP address. So that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next.